In an earlier section, we used angles and standard position to define the trigonometric functions. Our second look at the trigonometric functions is from a right triangle perspective. Hello, my name is Tom Atwater, and in this section, we will evaluate trigonometric functions using the familiar right triangle. Let's look at the right triangle-based definitions of the trigonometric functions. Using this triangle, we have an angle in standard position. We have our values x, y, which represent the point x, y on the terminal side, and we have the hypotenuse of the right triangle as r, the distance from the origin to the point x, y. In that case, the sine of angle A is equal to, well, we know it's y over r, but in particular for the right triangle, it's the side opposite over the hypotenuse. For the cosine of angle A, it's the side adjacent over the hypotenuse. And for the tangent of A, it's the ratio of the side opposite to the side adjacent. For our three reciprocal functions, cosecant of A is equal to the hypotenuse over the side opposite, the secant of A is equal to the hypotenuse over the side adjacent, and the cotangent of A is equal to the side adjacent over the side opposite. Let's use our newfound definitions to find the trig functions for the values in this following example. Find the exact values for the six trig functions of angle A. So, using our new definitions, we know that the sine of angle A is equal to the side opposite it divided by the hypotenuse. So, sine of A is the side opposite over the hypotenuse. When we look at our diagram, let me draw that diagram for us. We have a triangle in which this is the right angle up above. And we know that this side is 21, this side is 20, and that side is 29. The angle A that we're dealing with is right here. So when we want the sine of angle A, we want the side opposite it, 21, over the hypotenuse. So the sine of A is 21 over 29. Next, we'll find the cosine. The cosine of A is the side adjacent. Well, adjacent to A is 20. Divided by the hypotenuse is 29. So that's our cosine. The tangent of A whoops, is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So for our angle, Opposite is 21, adjacent is 20. Four, the cosecant of A. Well, remember that we can look at that as simply being the reciprocal of the sine of A, or with our newfound definitions, it's the hypotenuse over the opposite. So the hypotenuse is 29, the opposite is 21. What about for secant A? For secant A, that's going to be the hypotenuse over the side adjacent. The hypotenuse, of course, is 29. The side adjacent is 20. So for secant A, it's 29 over 20. And finally, for cotangent of A, we've said that that is equal to the adjacent side over the opposite side, and so the adjacent side is 20, and the opposite side is 21. So that would be the six trig functions based on the new definitions from right triangle trig. Now there are certain angles in trigonometry that are used so often, such as 30 degrees, 60 degrees, that they deserve special study. Let's develop triangles, contain those angles, and then use them to find the trigonometric function values 
for those angles. So we have a what's called an equilateral triangle. All three angles are 60 degrees, and all three sides are equal to 2. If I drop a perpendicular from the angle at the top and divide it into two triangles, you'll see that the two triangles are congruent. They are what we call a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And we can find the value of x by using the Pythagorean theorem. So let me do that for you. We have a right triangle, which is 30, 60, 90. That side is 1, this side is 2, and this side is x. So we can set up that 1 squared plus x squared equals 2 squared. And that means x squared equals 4 minus 1, which means x is equal to the square root of 3. We only take the positive root because, of course, we're dealing with the length of the side of a triangle. So our triangle, then, has the three sides, 1, square root of 3, and 2. And therefore, to find the six trigonometric functions, it's straightforward now. For example, let's start with the 30 degrees. The sine of 30 degrees would be the side opposite divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine of 30 degrees would be equal to the side adjacent over the hypotenuse. The tangent would be the side opposite over the side adjacent. So the tangent of 30 is equal to, well, originally it's 1 over the square root of 3, which when we rationalize the denominator gives us square root of 3 over 3. Of course, we could continue and find the cosecant, secant, and cotangent but they are just the reciprocals of the three functions that we have in front of us. In addition, we could find, for instance, and I will do this one, the sine of 60 degrees. The sine of 60 degrees will be the side opposite it over the hypotenuse. Square root of 3 over 2. I'm not going to continue, but we could go through and find the cosine of 60, the tangent of 60, as well as all the reciprocal functions. But that's how you can use that special triangle to find the trig functions of 30 and 60. Now, let's take a look at the 45, 45, 90 triangle. What we have this time is an isosceles triangle where the two legs are each equal to 1, the two angles that are in the non-right angle are each, of course, 45 degrees. And that means that r is equal to the square root of 2. So if I wanted to then find the trig functions for the 45-45-90 triangle, I would simply say that the sine of 45 degrees is the side opposite over the hypotenuse. When I rationalize the denominator, I get the square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of 45 degrees. Well, it's the side adjacent, 1, over the square root of 2. Rationalize it, and we get square root of 2 over 2. Yes, in fact, the sine of 45 degrees is equal to the cosine of 45 degrees. They both are the square root of 2 over 2. Let me do one more, the tangent of 45 degrees, which would be the side opposite over the side adjacent. 1 over 1, which is 1. 